Hi guys, how are you? My name is One Titanium. Welcome back to patreon.com slash real macro. Uh, let's do another video. Pavlina, Pavlina, Pavlina. For years I've been telling this chick, the Soviet sympathizer, that we are approaching max employment. Right? She's sitting here talking about, we need a job guarantee, we need a job guarantee. <laughs> like all the other retards from MMT, we need a job guarantee. We are in a, in a labor shortage. I mean, uh, God, it's cringy, uh, painful. So finally, she posts that the uh, newfound comfort with low unemployment, right in here. <laughs> the newfound, it's newfound. It just suddenly just, I don't know. Yesterday popped up. Hasn't been around for a very long time. Right? And they've been talking about this Nehru stuff forever and a day. Nehru this and Nehru that. And, you know, we've always laughed at these people because uh, it's as if some CEO is like, no, 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 don't, don't hire. We can make money there. Don't hire. Don't hire because their labor costs are going to go up. No, 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 no. Don't hire. Don't, don't go in there. No, no, no. Like, do they really believe this stuff? That 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 the private sector is going to be like, no, I'm not going to hire anybody. I'm not going to start a business and make money in this area because I'm going to lower unemployment. I mean, how stupid is that? But this is what they believe. So they've been talking about Nehru this and Nehru that and Nehru and Nehru. And that's how they control inflation. Um, they, they keep rising... They're raising interest rates to increase unemployment so they can keep inflation anchored. When in reality, the job guarantee is an uh, inflationary uh, anchor. Okay, And uh, Charles, Charles, he can tell you all about that. He's like the expert at it. He's got it down to a science. Okay, I'm not even going to attempt to, to, uh, to uh, repeat what he says. And, and I hope he comes here and he posts and explains it to anybody that wants to know how that is so um so finally she comes out and she admits that we do have low unemployment it was a waste of time they were just fear-mongering people for all these years mosler natasha kelton pavlina and all the other kaboob whatever his name is all these people just fear-mongering uh and finally they admit it now their problem is, oh, well, the jobs are not good enough, the wages suck, uh, you know, we have to suppress wages, we have, now, now this is what the Fed is going to do. Let me tell you something about the Fed. Fed adds and removes liquidity, okay? That's all the Fed does, right? It is about price stability and maximum employment. That's their dual mandate. Now, what she's arguing here for is for not price stability, she wants price instability now. And if we don't get price instability, well, the Fed is an asshole. Or assholes. Newsflash. Wages, net of inflation, are rising, and mostly at the bottom. Okay? So, uh, remember the, the argument they used to have that, oh, productivity, it's rising and the wages are not, and da, 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 they were crying in the street. Yes, productivity is always going to lead uh, to, to wage uh, uh, increases. Nobody's going to start paying anybody more before the productivity increases, right? You got to make more profit in order to, to pay more wages. So, of course, productivity is going to come first, and then there's going to come the, the wage inflation after that. That's normal. That You cannot expect it to be any other way. But yet, these people lead you to believe that it's supposed to be backwards. Is your productivity increasing? No. Oh, okay, let's give some pay raises. Well, I mean, what, what normal human would think like this? So, again, you know, she admits we have low unemployment, finally. Okay, we have more jobs and people looking for jobs, even though now it's starting to, to decelerate. Okay, um, we have wage uh, growth now in the economy. Um, 
yes, the economy is not doing as well as it should, and and that's just the way it is. So this may change in the near future at some point. But to sit here now and argue that, well, price stability is not good. We don't want price stability. We want price instability uh, because that's the way uh, things ought to be, that we should all pay more. Well, don't you worry your little heart out because um, what's going to happen now, okay, with all this, you know, carpet bombing, all this liquidity into the system, left, right, and center, Eventually, what you're going to see now is asset price inflation continues to rise as the savings bubble continues to rise. Eventually, you're going to start to see commodities start to rise. And commodities doesn't take a whole hell of a lot to uh, to start pushing higher. All it takes is a little bit of money to get pumped in there. It's a very small market relative to the other ones. And then guess what? Once you start getting uh, commodity inflation right, and prices start to rise, you're going to start seeing that in the supermarkets. Right? You're going to want to see that in housing. You're going to start seeing it everywhere. And then you know what's going to happen? People are going to realize at that point that, you know what, maybe you cannot just print money and uh, don't worry about how you're going to pay for it. They're going to start to, to recognize this inflation. It'll come. I mean, the dollar looks like it needs to, to correct a little bit. Okay. Uh, and, then, and then what are you going to do? You're going to get some higher interest rates. Maybe the economy will start to improve a little bit at some point. Okay, and then what? Then what? Then what's going to happen? MMT's finished. All these progressive socialists, uh, social, justice war social justice warriors, and the public purpose, all this stuff is going to go away. Just like it did with the Tea Party and the Libertarians and the Gold Bugs, where they were like hyperinflation, hyperinflation, hyperinflation. Stocks are, you know, the stock, uh, plunge protection team. Just like they got wiped out, these guys are going to get wiped out, especially after the 2020 election. Because I'm telling you right now, Bernie's not winning, and I've I've really tried to get away from MMT and you know just start you know forget about them. They're done. They're finished, right? The rest of the world doesn't know it yet, but they are. Believe me. But I think they 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 act as a as a good contrast to talk about real economics, about what's really happening. They, you know, you got to have a contrast. You got to have the the clown. <laughs> You gotta have the clown in order to show uh, what the A student is like, and and that's I think that's the benefit with talking about these people. And the same thing with the perma bulls. Right now, the perma perma bulls are really pissed off, even though they're acting like they're not. They believe me, they're really pissed off. And the reason they're pissed off is because like you, know, you look at Logan, Mokhtar Shami, whatever his name is. Right, the perma bull. Oh, everything is great. You know, my six-point model, which is really a 16-point model, which is not really a 16-point model because the LEI was different in 2011. I've talked about this before in videos and so forth. They're they're pissed off because they want to portray this image that the real economy is kicking ass. Well, the real economy is not kicking ass. <laughs> That's why we have 500 billion now. Right? Remember how it's going to be? Oh, it's a mid-rate adjustment, and then suddenly it became three rate cuts. Right in like what three months, and then we, we started getting these repos. Oh, don't worry about it. They're not QE. They're just short terms. It's just, you know, it's the taxes. It's the this. It's that. Fifty million different explanations about why the repo market is. Don't worry about it. Right. But all we've seen is the amount of repos increase consistently over time, and now. Now they're talking about half a trillion dollars of repos coming by the end of the year. Wonderful. Beautiful. Okay. And what have we seen? We have seen the stock market make all-time highs, not based on the real economy, but based on the, all this carpet bombing liquidity being pumped every which way. The Fed is hostage to the banks. Okay. They want liquidity. They're not naming names, okay, because if, you, if, if they name them, then everybody's going to start selling those banks because they'll be like, well, why the hell don't you have enough money after $4 trillion of uh, QE, after $5 trillion of stock buybacks, why don't you have enough uh, reserves? Mm. So now we had last year, we had about a trillion dollars of deficits. This year in two months and... And the, the fiscal year ends in uh, September. October is the first uh, month of the, of the 2020 uh, budget. And in the first two months, we've seen about $358 billion, I think. I don't know exactly what the, the amount is, but it's about $50 billion more than last year. 
right? So we're gonna we're gonna pump, you know, one third of a trillion dollars into the economy. We're gonna pump another f half a trillion dollars in QE. That's not QE, okay? Uh, we're gonna lower interest rates, and we're gonna pretend that this is a real economy, and stocks are at all time highs, and we're gonna we're gonna trigger the algos by using keywords that we know the algos are gonna react to. And we'll say trade war uh, is near uh, uh, um, uh, a deal. Okay, we use those words and boop, <laughs> stock market instantly is up 1%. And every time it comes down half of a percent or a quarter of a percent, we have a trade deal, boop, all goes kick, right? And this is only phase one of one. 150,000 different phases that we're going to have over the next four years, and we're going to talk about this after the election, but we are near a trade deal, poop, right? That, that's criminal, it's propaganda, uh, but don't worry about that. It's the real economy, that's why stock markets are going at all-time highs. No, 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 absolutely not, and that pisses off the perma bears to fucking no end. It drives them fucking crazy, okay? Because they want to also push their own brand of bullshit. They want to believe that they, they have this model, and this model is, is is so perfect that we don't even have to worry about anything. Just wait for the model. And that's why every single day they're talking about how great the economy is and how great the economy is because they're pushing a brand, on the flip side of the coin, we had the perma bears that have been crying for a fucking decade. Oh, the market is going to go down. 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 Right? And finally, they're starting to be right that it should be going down. All right? And, and if they don't tweet and the algos don't kick and you don't pump liquidity into the market, they will go down. Okay? We saw that in December. It was down 20%. And if you look at the fangs, uh, they were down about 32%. And then that's when the shit hit the fan. That's when everybody like, oh, whoa, 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 let's start pumping, <laughs> pumping in liquidity, right? Rates went to negative, uh, inverted yield curves, everything, you know, just went to, to hell uh, very quickly. And then everybody started to react, corporate bomb liquidity into the system. And the perma bear hates it, hates it. And the perma bulls are like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, like... <laughs> Doesn't anybody else see this? That they're, this is propaganda. This is manipulation. This is distortion. This is uh, they're stuck too. Everybody hates it. But let's go back a year. Let's go back more than a, a year and a half. What was happening in 2018? Oh, interest rates are above three percent. Oh, it crossed the line. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna have stagflation. Oh, here it comes. Right? What happened then? That's when I was saying that no interest rates are going to come down. Okay? Uh, you could see it in the charts. It was coming. Down. I didn't know what was going to cause it to come down, but it was coming down. Um, you looked at the data. It looked superb. Everything looked beautiful. Too beautiful. That was the problem. Oil was around $75. I said, hey, you know, time is short. Oil, right? Not so much that I knew what was going to happen. I didn't have a clue, but I did know that things looked too good and it needed to correct and there was going to be some slowdown in the global economy and remember back then we weren't really worried about trade wars and by the way trade wars is is more uh, of a headline like brexit was and grexit and all these other headlines that come across but n never really seem to matter and there's no difference here either but now since we found the keywords and we know when to use them Anytime the market is down a quarter of a percent, we've got to use those tweets, and then the algos are going to react to them, and that suits the president just fine. It suits China just fine. It suits the ECB just fine. Everybody's happy with that, okay? So um, that's what's going on in the markets right now. And again, back. A year and a half ago, stagflation, and now uh, we're seeing interest rates down, inverted yield curves, corporate bombing, liquidity. Lower, yeah, it's, it's it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. 
but it is funny to see uh, an MMT or Pavlina newfound comfort with low unemployment. <laughs> After all these years of, oh, Nehru, the, the government is purposely creating unemployment to control inflation. Nehru, Nehru. And now, oh, yeah, we're newfound comfort with low unemployment. They, they, these people are clowns, honestly. But they're really, really, really good uh, to, 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 to look at them, see what they say, see what reality is, and, and say, hmm, yeah. Uh, I get it now. I do, right? Remember, every, we we need more deficits. We need uh, lower taxes. We need all this stuff. Well, guess what? Trump did all that, right? Trump is the MMT president. He lowered taxes. Did that stimulate the economy? <clears throat> Wrong. Nope, it didn't. That money went to the top one per five percent. That money went into the savings bubble, and did what? Created asset price inflation. Ooh, that's great. Trillion dollar deficits last year. 4.5% of GDP. What was the GDP growth? 2%. Oh, yes. That's what we need. More deficits. Did it create a better economy? No. No, no, no. But don't you see that the unemployment fell? You just said that yourself. You didn't. No, 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 no. It's not the way it works. See, did we did did economies recover prior to the Fed and deficit spending? And the answer is yes. Okay. The, the, you don't require deficits or lower interest rates or, or, or you don't need all that stuff for an economy to improve. It does it on its own. Okay. It's just, we have become accustomed to thinking that, oh, wait, the government lower interest rates. Oh, the government has, you know, uh, pumped in more money into the, into the system. Oh, that's why the economy improved. No, 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 no. Does it assist? Yes, absolutely does. You can see that data because it happens less frequently. The recovery is a little bit faster than it used to be. Okay, definitely it assists during high unemployment. During a recession, it definitely helps. But it's not the reason why it recovers. It recovers on its own. The private sector takes care of its own, right? What happened to interest rates? Remember, oh, the Fed sets interest rates. Bullshit. Interest rates went from 3.25% all the way down to 140. Did the Fed lower the interest rates to 140? Nope. Did the, did the Fed set interest rates to 3.25%? Nope. Right? So what happened when it went from 3.25% all the way down to 140? Housing improved. Magically. The market gave itself a stimulus. And then the Fed came along and started to, uh, to catch up. That's that's what happened. That's reality, right? I'm not making this up. You guys lived it. The only thing tax cuts, deficits, and lower interest rates are doing right now, and the repos, are just boosting the asset prices. That's it. Stocks and bonds. That's all they're doing. Even housing, right? And you know what's going to come, come next? Commodities. I'm telling you, it's going to come. I don't know exactly when it's going to come, but I'm telling you, it's coming. All right, you're going to see it, and you're going to remember me, and I'm going to say, oh, look at that video I made. Remember that one? And then you guys are going to come back, watch this video, and be like, oh, yeah, he did say it. Just like everything else I've said. So clearly, everything that MMT says that, oh, you know, we have a cash famine. All we need is to pump more money into the economy, and it lifts all boats and all this nonsense. Okay, that's not true. It's not. We've seen it. Okay, we've pumped the money. We've lowered the interest rates. The economy is not improving. GDP is still <laughs> still 2%. All right. And all we've done is just push asset prices higher. It's all we have accomplished to do. Push the market higher. Push stock market, stock market higher. And that's it. That's all it's accomplished to do. Nobody's making all this extra money. It's not our savings. Right? We're not all stuffed with savings. We just created a distortion. All we've done. That's it. And I'll leave you with this, and I'll keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. No government can print value for a currency. Cannot be done. And right in that little sentence, MMT goes out the window. Okay? You can print a currency. You can never run out of digits. True. But you can't. You cannot create value for those digits. 
therefore they're worthless. That means that you cannot multiply wealth by dividing it. That's not possible. Okay? It's just no government can multiply wealth by dividing, by printing and dividing little digits. Not going to happen. The economy is able to produce what it's able to produce. That's it. That's the wealth. Beyond that, printing, it's not going to help you. That's why you have 4.5% deficits and you're getting 2% GDP. And, and you're getting asset price inflation and you're not seeing a great improvement in the real economy. And I've been talking about the savings bubble now for over three years. I've been telling everybody this is a savings bubble. It's a savings bubble. You're not going to see inflation because the money's going through the functional, the productive economy right into the unproductive portion of the economy uh, in the private sector. And those dollars are being saved and it's going into asset prices and they keep going higher and higher. And that's exactly what's happening. And you see it today in real life. As soon as we, we the economy starts acting a little bit funky, they carpet bomb all this liquidity and nothing happens. The only thing that happens is the asset prices rise and that pisses the shit out of the permables, pisses them off beyond belief because they cannot legitimately claim this is the real economy. And it pisses off the MMTers and it pisses off the perma bears, but the perma bears uh, this time uh, they have a right to be pissed off at this. Because corporate earnings are not rising, but the prices are. Okay? So you get a multiple expansion, and that's why Buffett has $120 billion in cash, and he's like, I'm not putting that money to work. No, sir. No, I'm not. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. And I'm not paying a high price. And, uh, you know, but the perma bulls are like, oh, you know, Buffett is an idiot. I don't think so. I'll stick with Buffett. So that's it, guys. Uh, we'll do more videos. Uh, don't forget, patreon.com slash macro. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.